Thank you, uh, Deputy Secretary Campbell. I now recognize myself for questions. You know, one of my big takeaways from the region was how much progress we have made. Uh, the alliances between Japan, South Korea, Philippines is extraordinary. Who would think that those countries would be aligned uh, together? Um, it is a counter to China's malign influence. And in many respects, China could be its own worst enemy <clears throat> with the belligerence against the Philippines. I think President Marcos has gotten even stronger uh, in his rhetoric. And we certainly felt the island nations, as they feel more threatened by China, their perception of China changes. And I think Australia is in that category as well, which is why AUKUS is so important. Um, as you mentioned, this is, you know, if you pulled someone on the street, they wouldn't know what we're talking about. But it's, I think it's one of the most important alliances that we've seen in, in recent history. Um, the idea that the UK and Australia, the United States can come together to counter the threat in the Pacific uh, from China um, is really extraordinary. Um, and it was bipartisan. Uh, and um, you know, the intent of Congress, as I stated in my op-ed in the Wall Street Journal, uh, was the exemption to apply to all defense articles except those explicitly prevented by statute or treaty. Now, this, this excluded technology list came out. So you have ITAR that, that basically says, look, these international regulations are not going to apply to this partnership. However, the exceptions in the excluded technology list really get the intent of Congress and the bill itself. Uh, the current ETL does not reflect, in my view, the intent. Uh, we, uh, Meeks, Greg Meeks and I had dinner with some high-level DOD officials, uh, the ambassador to China um, and um, others. Uh, the two, they too shared the concern about the State Department's interpretation of Pillar 2. Pillar 1, the nuclear submarines, um, seems to be well on its way. Pillar 2, though, I see in some respects even more important because, as you said, this is a great competition for technology and AI. So when I look at the list of accepted or excluded technologies when it, it talks about um, precision weapons, this one, unmanned underwater vehicles. Well, we got a presentation uh, in Australia of one of the most cutting edge AI underwater vehicles. Um, they could really make a difference. That would be excluded by this technology list uh, that came forward, communication networks, uh, naval acoustics, and then jet engines. That just being a few, I, I think th those broad categories of excluded technologies sends a, I think a really bad message to Australia that we don't trust them, even though we share the crown jewel nuclear submarine and they're five eyes so we share with them our most sensitive uh, you know, intelligence, but we're not gonna trust them with co-production. And I think co-production could actually help us with the defense industrial base problem that we have uh, you know, also. So I, can, I kinda get a sense where you are, sir, on this. And I think I, I have a good understanding where the secretary is. I happen to think that these decisions were made at a lower level um, and they were done very in a very proprietary, protective way that will damage, again, the intent of Congress. So my uh, takeaway to you, sir, if you take this back to the secretary is raise this to the higher level the policy level of people that know what the right thing is to do, that know what Congress intended to do, because it's not what came out on this list. That, By the way, it was four months delayed. Um, and I think we can get there. We got about 60 days, but I would challenge you and the secretary to work with us, Mr. Meeks, myself, and you know, with the Department of Defense uh, to get to a better place uh, because Look, in Australia, it's a 20, 50 year commitment. And they see that and it may, you know, that's a strong commitment to Australia and to the UK in a common defense against China. 
if we fail at this one, and I think we've uh, poorly executed the uh, plan that we had, and I can tell you based on intelligence I've seen without getting into classified, AUKUS is probably one of those issues that, that Chairman Xi uh, is most concerned about and probably is the one that keeps him up uh, at night. And so I want to give you a chance to respond. So first of all, Chairman, sincerely, I appreciate these comments, and I'm going to take those um, views back. And it's something I've, I've worked on AUKUS uh, since its inception. I think it's very strategically significant. I, I will just underscore a couple of things. The natural instincts of our government, rightly, at DOD, at the State Department, is to restrict technologies that have been central to our national security. But you're absolutely right. If we've made the, this decision to work in the strongest possible partnership with our two closest allies in many respects, Great Britain and Australia, we're going to have to make those adjustments. It will be challenging, but we're going to have to make those adjustments. Now, what I will tell you, just by way of just a quick explanation, those areas that you mentioned, acoustics and stuff, it is not that the, that the folks at lower levels are saying the answer is no. They're saying we have to re review each case as it comes to us. It doesn't mean that they'll reject it, but I think what our Australian friends are primarily concerned with, Chairman, is that that could lead to a very cumbersome process, long reviews, you know, uh, overruns in terms of times and delivery. And so we need to make this usable for defense planners and others that are making billion dollar investments. And so I think the point that you're um, underscoring is critically important. Your op-ed, your letters, what you have done in uh, conjunction with the ranking minor, uh, uh, member have actually helped us to be able to make sure that we are doing the right thing in our government to acknowledge this partnership. Just one last thing I would say. So pillar one is the part that's about the submarines. It, pillar two doesn't get enough attention. And that's really about not just, we're, we, we have three countries engaged in that now, but looking at advanced technologies, capabilities that are innovative, perhaps not as expensive, and you're exactly right. If you look behind the scenes, both Great Britain and Australia have made investments in innovative capable, capabilities that would be very good for us. So we need to break through and work on those issues together. Sorry to go over. Yeah, and I think AI, you know, land, uh, air, and sea uh, will be critically important. I would, uh, I would ask that you engage with us in the committee on this. <clears throat> we don't want to see some product come out of the you know, lower levels of the State Department that we've been, you know, uh, secluded from in, in darkness or that we have no idea what's going on, when it's going to come out, what's going to be in it. And I think you're the perfect person to engage with this committee on the next 60 days, um, how we can work together uh, to carry out the intent of Congress in, in passing this important legislation. I... Uh completely wholeheartedly accept that challenge and I will make it so. Thank you. Thank you.